Hi, I'm Jim Manning from Richland County District 8, and I want to welcome you to this edition of the Monthly Recap. Council members, magistrate judges, other officials, and community members all gathered to officially dedicate the Decker Center, Richland County's newest facility. Located at 2500 Decker Boulevard in the heart of Richland County's International Corridor, the 110,000 square foot building, formerly a shuttered shopping center, has been transformed into a spacious, modern facility housing Central Magistrate Court, a Sheriff's Department Annex, and a community room for public events. We are here today because we are so excited about today and we are happy that you chose to be here with us this morning. And after many months, we have finally come to the point where we can dedicate the Decker Center to the service of the citizens of Richland County. While Decker Center has been open for several months and many people have come through those doors, it's appropriate that we take this time to come together to give thanks for this new facility and to show the progress of Richland County Council. For the last 10 to 12 years, there have been many, many, many exciting moments along Decker Boulevard, being named Richland County's International Corridor, a master plan that was done with input of all the stakeholders in 2006. But there is no better day, probably in the last two decades, than this day right here before us today with the dedication of this wonderful, wonderful Richland County facility. Today the focus is on the Decker Center. And County Councilors, please, this facility will serve the needs of the general public for many, many years to come. And so today we are in a building that we're all very proud of. We want to continue to be parts of the catalyst that continues to develop this community into the vibrant community it has become. In addition to nine courtrooms, including a large space for traffic court, the new building features modern technology systems to provide better customer service. On the same day, county council members honor former Chief Magistrate Judge Walter S. Jones, Sr. Members of the Jones family unveiled a commemorative portrait of Judge Jones that will be displayed outside of a courtroom at the Decker Center. It is fitting that this building, which exists for the purpose of serving the residents of Richland County, that it remembers a man who was committed to public service. Richland County Council is honored that Judge Jones' family is here today to unveil a portrait of the former chief Majesty. The portrait commissioned by Richland County Council will have a most public place in honor in the halls of this center, Richland County's new Central Magistrate Court. It is our prayer that his image and the memory of his work and service continue to be a reminder to the citizens of this community that all can play a part in sharing and the shaping of the future for a better community. Richland County hosted a class in September to prepare senior citizens for floods and other severe weather situations. Staff members taught seniors about the importance of emergency preparedness during a workshop held at the Garnets Ferry Adult Activity Center in Hopkins. Seniors received informational brochures and handouts as well as free weather radios. And so I was interested to find out the information concerning flooding because, you know, we've been inundated with floods and things of that nature. So it's always good to be prepared mentally and physically. The food that you need to take with the, along with your important information, how to, how to store that in case things happen, uh, what to do when you need to contact people, how to contact people. Um, to let them know that you're okay or that you're coming in for uh, maybe to live with them or to stay with them for a certain period of time. For more information about flood preparation, visit rcgov.us slash flood recovery slash flood tools. 
a ribbon cutting ceremony to celebrate the completion of a $5 million road widening project was held near the state fairgrounds in September. I'm excited about all of the Penny projects. I am very happy that this one means that there'll be a sort of a safer way for pedestrians to get to and from when they're going to the fair or to a game at the stadium. And when, for the people who live in this area, when they're just walking along the street, um, because this is a light industrial area, and to the extent that there are 18 wheelers driving a along the road at any given time of the day, it's really good to have sidewalks full sidewalks where pedestrians can be very safe and the cars can move freely. This delegation came to us to ask for help on a project to improve safety for pedestrians in the Bluff Road and Rosewood Drive area. Specifically, they wanted to talk about building a sidewalk along Bluff Road. I didn't need much convincing to see the need to improve safety for pedestrians on our roads. And at a time when the state um, was not as focused on big um, tra transportation infrastructure and funding big projects like this, the county stepped up um, and put forward a plan. Um, and it took a lot of people working together to get the plan passed. I'm grateful that there are penny projects that have been contemplated in all these areas and I look forward to um, us pushing the projects along to make sure that we touch all parts of the county. Construction on the second phase of the project, from National Guard Road to South Beltline Boulevard, is expected to begin in 2018. Visit richlandpenny.com for more information. The Midlands Flood Recovery Group held a ceremony in October to celebrate the 200th home the group has repaired in the Midlands. Volunteers and representatives from a variety of flood recovery partners including the United Way, SBP, and Richland County, gathered in the Crane Creek area neighborhood to recognize the hard work that has been done. It goes without saying, two years ago, South Carolina experienced the most devastating event in recent history um, with the flooding. And two years ago, this very day, we were still taking inventory and trying to understand exactly what happened, the extent of what happened, and beginning to think about how do you even deal with this. And here we are two years later celebrating the 200th home that the flood recovery, the Midlands Flood Recovery Group is going to be working on. Thank y'all very much. I feel like God have answered my prayer and all these good people came out to celebrate and helping me do it, you know, or doing volunteer work. I didn't know it was so many until I see them, I've seen them at my home. And they have them beautiful people on working with me. The event highlighted the ongoing need for volunteers and donations to continue the critical work being done to help the families affected back on their feet. Donations can be made at restoringhopesc.org. Dr. Patrick Bresnahan and John Barry of Richland County Geographic Information Systems taught students at St. Joseph Catholic School in Columbia how to read coordinates on maps. They also helped students complete a map reading exercise by streaming live drone footage commonly used by the county. The county's GIS division provides a high-tech mapping information that is an invaluable resource for multiple county departments as well as the general public. For more information, visit richlandmaps.com. Richland County recently won an Ambassador of Excellence Award from the National Weather Service for its groundbreaking local weather network. The award is presented to agencies that improve awareness, readiness, and response when severe weather occurs. The county's weather information network data system, known as RC Winds, is the first of its kind in the nation. RC Winds is a hyperlocal system of more than 40 data collection points throughout the county that provide real-time and historic weather information. RC Winds, a product of the county's Emergency Services Department, has gained widespread accolades since its inception in 2013 and has become a reliable source for meteorologists, emergency planners, and the National Weather Service. For more information about RC Winds, 
visit rcwins.com or download the free mobile phone app. Thank you for joining us for the recap. Like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter for weather updates, emergency information, and county news. Now, here are some recent statistics from county departments working hard for you.